Hello, Dara. How are you? Hello, good. How are you? It's a fucking hurricane, man. I mean, it seems like you guys are the happy little donut hole in yep. the donut of fuckery. Because those... North Carolina might just be ocean now. I don't even... So if, if you guys didn't follow last week, um, we were in the uh, the target path of Hurricane Florence, and they, the Weather Channel was a constant stream of, oh, God, oh, God, you're all going to die. Eat did you show. die? No, we. I did not die. I did not well, die. Well, cool. I, I, yeah, in fact, my area, which was, they, they were taught, they were originally, they were calling for, like, potentially hurricane force winds. And then they were saying, okay, you'll get tropical storm force winds. And then we got a day of pissy rain and a medium breeze. But, I mean, there there are places that, like... Oh, yeah, there are places that had it much worse. Like, and I do North not want Carolina to... should have just built an ark, apparently. I do not want to be them. I do... No, you're going to hide in daddy's desk? <laughs> I do not... She's in here, but she's like, don't exploit me. I have been through a hurricane. I don't want to do it again, ever the fuck again. So I'm glad, on, on the one hand, I'm glad, and I feel bad for folks who weren't. But on the other, my brain is going, did all these preparations... And I got all this stuff. We bought all the. I've got all these. What am I doing with all this bottled water? I mean, it's pretty early in hurricane season, and I don't know. There's like six more in the ocean just waiting. Are you trying to cheer me up? So you'll get your chance. Man. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, goody. Thank you. What are you doing in there? It's completely irrational. It's just the fact that that we spent a whole week getting ramped up for this thing, and then. You you got like hurricane blue balls. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy. Oh. So Dan cleaned out his desk. And uh I don't know if I can show you like Dan's desk area. And there's one little cubby down here mm -hmm. that used to be full of paper, but now that it's like the second he emptied it out, Peggy was like, Why thank you. You made a spot for me. <laughs> and she just hangs out in this empty desk cubby, just rolling around. Grady did the same. I got uh, one of those cube things, those cube shelves. Yeah. Although I just got it because it was the right height and size to put my computer on. So the cube little areas are empty and Grady's like, mine. That looks like a perfect place for a cat. Yep. I tried. Simba was in here, but then he left. And when I tried to grab him, he yelled at me. So <sighs> Grady just Grady is very, very compliant with all of our bullshit. I think he's very tolerant. I have three cats that are not tolerant. And like Peggy and Dottie are being such plastics to poor Simba. Arkle. Hurricane Blue Balls. Hurricane Blue Balls is the name of your Scorpions cover band. Think about it. <laughs> Give it a second. It'll click. There you go. Um oh, right. Poor Simba keeps trying to make friends with them and they're just growling and hissing at him. You can't sit with us. You adopted like, a couple of mean girls. Yeah. And he's like, but, but, but friends? And they're like, no, fuck you. Well, I'm working, I'm working on it. Shall we begin the nonsense? Do you want to do the nonsense? Not particularly. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and you know what i said last week when the hurricane was coming about what would happen this week on the show yeah i am a prophet i mean i don't know that you're a prophet so much as idiots are predictable great psychic powers belong to me Okay. I know many things. Two men arrested in Fayetteville family dollar looting. Now, first, before we get dig into the story, I do want to point out there were some instances of looting out there, like especially in certain areas. One one family dollar said, Hey guys, don't even bother. The shit's gonna be flooded anyway. Tell the police to back off if people need shit. And they did get that's very cool of them. But 
This one was not in one of those areas. And these guys made it worse because they made it stupid. Bayville, North Carolina. Uh, Cumberland County Sheriff's detectives arrested two men Tuesday who were accused of looting the family dollar. Looting the family dollar. That is one of the most Southern things you can do. <laughs> yeah, like if you're just going to loot, go somewhere expensive, man. You're not paying. Randy Mitchell Walker, 56, and Derek Hilliard, 36, are accused of breaking the store's glass door and taking multiple items, including... Now, did they break in to take necessities? Did they break in for diapers or canned food or water or, or anything to help them ride out the store? I mean, I think that depends on your definition of necessities. They took five cases of Corona beer, five bags of chips... And dishwasher pods. You could argue that those are necessities, although they didn't take any limes. Dishwasher. They're looting for dishwasher pods in the middle of a fucking they hurricane. They have a lot of dirty dishes. But wait, it gets better. The sheriff's office responded to the store before 9 p.m. Thursday. About an hour later, Walker called 911 and reported his home was broken into. When deputies arrived at Walker's house, they found the shirt that the suspect wore during the break-in on Walker's front porch with glass from the family dollar's door still in it. Oh, honey. Deputies also recovered several full cold bottles of Corona and dishwasher pods in the trash can that Walker and Hillard were standing next to. You don't want to... That's what the TV shows call an orgy of evidence. <laughs> Generally, when you commit a crime, mm. if you're going to interact with the police, you want there to not be an orgy of evidence. You want the opposite of that. I mean, you, you called them. You invited them. What were they going to be like? Oh, well... And then uh... you had all the stolen shit like, around, like... I just the dish one. What the fuck were you? you can, I can even imagine one of the guys looked at the other while they were in the store. What are you gonna do with the dishwasher pods? Well, I can use them later. There ain't no power. Power's gonna come back on eventually, and I got you. Am I supposed to do these dishes by hand while the power's out? Derek, there ain't no power, son. That'd be me. I'm like, what am I supposed to wash these dishes with my hands? I just did my nails, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck's sake. What the just of all the look, I, I, I and I will not fault anybody. If you're in the middle of a fucking hurricane, everyone's like, oh, you, they should have just evacuated. Do you know how much time and money it takes to evacuate? Uh, Even if they give you a free bus out of town, they don't give you a free bus back to town. Yeah. And if you work retail, if you work a nine to five, if you work hourly and you leave, you don't get paid. And sometimes yeah. the stores leave and get pissed if you leave and they're still open. And if you have pets, a lot of shelters, a lot of hotels won't take them. There was one woman on CNN who like they interviewed her and she's like, I'm not evacuating. And she's like, it's not because I think I'm tough. It's because I have seven rescue dogs that are all different kinds of special needs and I can't, I have no way to transport them. She's like, this one dog was abused and is terrified of men. I can't take him to a shelter. Like, she's like, I. So if you're stuck. Like, that's what I got to do. If you're stuck and you can't evacuate and you need stuff. I mean, you literally need food and water. If you've seen New Bern, uh, which is near Wilmington, the, the water's got. Re so if you're in a bad situation, I ain't going to blame you for getting necessities. I am going to blame you if you steal fucking Corona and potato chips. In what world are beer and chips not necessities? This world, Tara. This I world. don't. Chips are a fucking necessity. Corona, though? I mean, probably not. I mean, Jesus Christ. You didn't even get the good beer. You got the shitty beer. And they didn't get limes. <laughs> like... If you don't have a lime in it, you actually can taste Corona. <laughs> you 
don't want. There's a reason they advertise add fruit to our beer because our beer tastes bad. So you need to add fruit to it. Okay. Well, this this next one is just this story is crazy as fuck for so many different reasons. Let's just start it off the location it comes from. Ipswich. Oh, God, this one. So we're already... All the way to Ipswich. So we're already starting off on a weird vibe. Here's, here's a little, here's a little uh, video for everyone of what was happening in the middle of the night to this poor bunch of people in Ipswich. Uh, let's get this over here. Come on. I'm not, I'm not watching that creepy ass video again. All right, here we go. It is a horror movie that that was okay so what was happening is in the middle of the night where'd my thing go there it is in the middle of the night this family was getting tormented by this song loudly blasting into their house i would definitely move um because that is the ghost of a dead victorian child trapped in a doll that's just going to make your life hell. The woman said the uh, threatening undertone of the song had left her frightening and questioning whether she was imagining things. After months of torment, she finally reported the unusual complaint to the Ipswich Borough Council. Um, early, early this morning, the mom was once again woken by the music and quickly called the council's rapid response team. The team sprang into action. They joined the woman at the scene and went out to investigate the ongoing mystery. They tracked the eerie music down to an industrial premises on the neighboring Farthing Road estate where the music was playing through a loudspeaker. Um, the music, this is the part, all right, what they did was they set up this music with a motion sensor to dissuade people from uh, trespassing on the property. Like, have you not heard of just an alarm? Boo, 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 boo. But here's where it gets even better. The motion no. sensor better is not the correct word. Spokesman for the site said the sound is only supposed to act as a deterrent for opportunistic thieves that come on our property and it's designed only to be heard by people on our private land. Well, that didn't work. Yeah. We are now aware of the problem. The motion sensors were being triggered by spiders crawling across the lens of our camera. There's nothing okay about any of this. This entire thing is fucking weird as shit. Oh, so the creepy nursery rhymes were just the result of spiders. All of that is horrible. You should just burn down the whole town. <laughs> oh my god. What Of all the things to, to get people to leave your property... Right? I mean, I guess that would work. You'd automatically assume that place is haunted as fuck and run. But you could also just use an alarm. See, that's you. If that were me, I'd be like, holy shit, get, get out the fuck, get your fucking iPhone out. This is fucking awesome. Well, I say that. My husband would assume the place is haunted and dive in. <laughs> like, he loves watching those shitty, like, real haunting shows. And he's like, I would love to do this. And I'm like, you can go by yourself. I'm not, I'm not going with you. <laughs> so, okay. So we have this little cluster, this little conflagration of weird shit. We have this family being tormented in the middle of the night by a mysterious nursery rhyme that seems to be implying their death. The fact that you didn't take your children and run, lady. <laughs> Now, then we have this factory where the sound is coming from a loudspeaker. And then we have the fact that the sound is being set off by spiders. Yeah. This, this is like, this, maybe there's something to Ipswich after all. Uh, cause that, 
that that is about Ipswich, except that it's the most Englandy name of a place ever. It's it's a Lovecraft thing. It's it's a heavy Lovecraft thing. Oh, I know it from Stardust. I'm going to go all the way to Ipswich to get me an engagement ring. Peggy, come here. No, come here. Oh, look what I caught. Oh, no. Hi. Say hi, Internet. I tried to get away, but Mommy caught me. She wants no part of this. She doesn't. Hi. I love you. Were were you going to go be nice to your brother? No, I was going to go growl and hiss at him. All right. Well, don't do that, okay? No promises? Okay. Bye-bye. So, uh, we've both worked in retail, and there's a certain kind of lady we know. And I, I'm not, I don't feel bad classifying this as a lady because it's almost always a lady. Mm-mm. There's a reason there's a meme about the can I speak to your manager haircut. That's exactly the lady. Yeah. Can I speak to your manager? It's, I don't know what men will, will get there, but they don't start there. I don't know what this is. I'm not saying this. There's some you know weird thing about women. I'm just saying, for some weird reason, it always seems to be a lady. Yeah. Of course, men get loud and aggressive about that shit. Men women don't care about. You know why? Because men don't bother caring about who they're yelling at. Yeah. Shitty man customers will That's just true. yell at whoever's in front of them. That's true. Shitty women customers want to yell at the most important person they can find. Well. This is the, this lady kind of tried to pull. I can I speak to your manager on a cop. Woman refuses to pull over. Tells trooper, "quote I drive a Prius." That doesn't matter. The suspect had expired tabs and reportedly refused to stop for a mile or give her name. Marysville. Washington State Patrol Trooper got more than he bargained for when he tried to pull over a woman from Olympia with expired tags. The trooper spotted a white hatchback Toyota Prius uh, Prius, sorry, southbound on I-5. When the trooper turned on his emergency lights, the driver, quote, made no reasonable attempt to pull over. She drove about a mile before leaving I-5 and stopping at an intersection. The trooper then told her over the loudspeaker to get off the road. She stayed put. Trooper approached the driver's side window and told her again to move off the road. She allegedly said she would not stop until she reached the Bank of America parking lot. Trooper told her to pull over a third time. Quote, I will not. I drive a Prius. I am not pulling over there. I don't understand why the model of car. I don't know. The trooper told her a fourth time, again, she refused. Seeing the driver would not cooperate, the dro- cooperate, the trooper told her to step out of the vehicle. She said no and resisted. He then forced her, forced her out. The driver was unhappy. Quote, I will own your bank account. I will own your house. The trooper asked her name. Quote, none of your business. This whole article should have been called Things You Only Get Away With If You're White. The driver told the trooper... Any black person in America would have been dead three times over. Driver told the driver told the... YouTube comments. The driver told the trooper she would not pull over to the shoulder because her tires keep popping because her car is a Prius. That's not because your car is a Prius. It's because you buy shitty tires. And you don't know how to drive. I just... It... How are you supposed to communicate that to the officer? I drive a Prius explains nothing. There is, it is legitimate that if you're being pulled over and you don't feel comfortable in the space you are, if you, you know, if you want to pull over in a more public place, that is legitimate. And most yes. understanding about that, the thing you do is you put on your fucking hazards and you get as far to the right as you can. Yeah, you make it clear, look, we're going to pull over. I'm not right. running away from you. But then you're looking for a public place. If right. you're a woman driving alone and you don't want to be alone somewhere with anybody you don't know or whatever. Yeah. You don't just be like, no, fuck you. That's some fucking white nonsense. That is. You don't that just. Is some, 
That is some white lady bullshit. I will own your bank, a bank account. I will own your house. You have an expired registration, bitch. He had a perfectly legitimate reason to pull you over. You go get a ticket. That's yeah. how it works. That's that's life. Even if you're white. <sighs> Even if you have money. But she drives a Prius, Tara. Who the fuck he cares? Wait, I love I drive a little roller skate car. My husband jokes about having to wind my car up with a key before you get in. Cop pulls me over, I'm pulling the fuck over. I like how she added, would ask her name. Her name is none of her business. That's like thinking idio idiocracy. So your name is not sure. Like that's <laughs> called resisting arrest then. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've already decided this is what we have to call this week's show. I already know what the name of this week's show is going to be called. It's going to be Look What the Cat Dragged In. That's because of this next story. Cats... Hey, are you going to play the song by Poison? No. Oh my God, look what the cat did. Cats, cats are, are, are very, especially outdoor cats, are very strange. Um, there are a lot of theories about this, nothing concrete, but what they will do is they will go out, kill things, and bring it back to you. They will kill birds. Some people say it's because they want to, sh they want to teach you how to hunt. Right, they think, we're, they think we're big dumb kittens. Some that it's they want to share a meal with you, some they are trying to show their affection. They think we don't know how to hunt because we don't ever what, hunt. Well, apparently this cat didn't th thought her thought their owner didn't know how to hang. Um, cat finds <laughs> bag of cocaine and heroin, brings it home. When your cat is too cool for you, <laughs> cat apparently found a bag. I brought found and brought home a bag of what are suspected to be class A drugs. The owner uh, from St. Paul's in Bristol found the pet curled up next to the bag on Monday morning, meaning it acquired the drugs while roaming out Sunday night, probably leaving a dealer out of pocket. Uh, out of a lot. Look at that bag. Oh, yeah. There's the, the, uh, the feline apparently had slept alongside the illegal substances in its bed. The wraps appear to be crack cocaine and heroin with a street value of hundreds of pounds. Yeah, like that's a lot of money. <laughs> But please, your cat's bringing home the fucking bacon. Police spokesman said the contents of the bag have yet to be analyzed, but it's suspected to be Class A drugs. There's a dealer out there who is yeah. losing their fucking mind trying to figure out where their drugs went, and they have no idea that it was stolen by mittens. <laughs> <laughs> like they're beating the shit out of somebody in their little. <laughs> I, I should laugh, but some dude's getting his fingernails pulled out. Meanwhile, it's it's fluffy. This is like the worst episode of The Wire ever. <laughs> Come on, that would be a great episode. <laughs> it would. It kind of would. <laughs> now I want like a crime fighting cats cartoon show. <laughs> Not like they actually make an effort to fight crime. They just happen to fuck up crime by being cats. Uh, like someone's about to mug somebody, but the cat runs right in between their feet and they fall over. This dude is out there trying to talk to a supplier. No, look, it was in the... And you know what? It's not just this dude. Every drug dealer yeah. in Bristol right now is going to their supplier and saying, no, man, the cat took my stash. Look. It was on you the news. On the corner like, now nah, fuck your money. I want I want temptations. <laughs> you got temptation sh shrimp flavor. Shrimp flavor. I got good shit. I just I just love the idea that every single fucking drug dealer is trying to get out of paying their deal th their supplier right now by blaming it on a cat because it was in the fucking news. That's, no man. A good kitty. Cat stole the stash. <laughs> You can have outdoor cats in the UK because there aren't anything that will kill them, really. Not really, yeah. Like, there's not bears and fucking coyotes and shit there. They're just going to meet up with someone else's cat. And or steal... A, or, like, a mean badger. Or steal drugs. Or steal drugs. <laughs> will says, say my name, Mittens. You're goddamn right. <laughs> 
Oh, all right. Let's see. Well, okay. You know, somehow, sometimes when I say the same shit keeps happening over and over, that's not really me wanting new shit to happen. That really. We've been at this a long time. I would like some new shit. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you? You're. You're positive. Okay then. Man accused of rubbing his butt on produce in Northern Virginia grocery store. Why? A man was arrested at a Northern Virginia grocery store after he was seen pulling down his pants and rubbing produce items on his buttocks. Suspect then put the items back on the shelves. A loss prevention employee told uh, the store told authorities. Officers respond to the giant grocery store. Uh, that's not the size, that's the name. It's <laughs> It was fucking huge, man. Officers arrested Michael Dwayne Johnson, 27, at the store. Johnson is facing charges of indecent exposure and destruction of property. The store had to destroy several pallets of produce after the incident. That's a lot of butt rubbing. Well, even like if he did it to <laughs> one apple on a pallet, they got to lose the whole pallet because they have no definitive way of knowing that the rest of them are okay like that's how it is with food service like if you when i used to work at starbucks if you accidentally spilled like a drop of coffee in the ice bin whole ice bin had to go well you know even still that had to be a lot of rubbing his butt several pallets and like, and like why <laughs> i mean what, what do you, you want to do today michael I was thinking I might go to the supermarket and rub some fruit on my butt. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a solid way to spend your day. You know, when I was a kid and you wanted to claim something, you just licked it. Do you know Simba does that? <laughs> claims- if I put down, if I give them all treats, he, he likes to save his treats for later because he's a weird cat. But he knows that the the girls will eat treats, so he literally will pick each one up in his mouth and then spit it back out. (laughs) He will lick them and then walk away. I'm like... Okay, but he doesn't rub his ass on them. No, he does not. (laughs) He does not rub his ass on the treats. Uh, Sales associate aisle six. Sales associate aisle six. Someone's rubbing apples on their butt. Again, no. nobody at the store makes enough money to justify having to put up with that. Nobody at that store is paid enough for that crap. The dude rubbing apples on his butt. No. Just... And that would be my, if my manager was like, you got to go talk to that guy. I'd be like, I make $10 an hour, motherfucker. You're on salary. Sounds like you got to go talk to that guy. <sighs> Do you have health pennies? Because I don't. I just, what the fuck? At least it's novel. I'll grant you that. Yeah. That's about all I'll give you, but I this is the first time we've ever had someone rubbing fruit on their butt. Like I really want to know why. What 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 brought you to that decision? Where you were like were you grocery shopping and then just <laughs> looked at the oranges and were like, "You know what? My butt needs some folic acid." <laughs> Did you go there specifically to do this thing? Did you just arrive there and get inspired? Like, what happened here? <laughs> Were you singing apple bottom jeans and just... Hey. Yeah. Like, what happened? Uh, all right. Last one tonight comes from Reading, Pennsylvania. And... um. What the shit happened here? Redding man sentenced to state prison for shooting at imaginary clowns. Okay. Redding man was sentenced Monday to 22 months to five years in state prison for firing a shotgun while drunk in his apartment because he believed there were clowns inside it. Least. Man, that they, they're really deviating from the Stephen King version of It for the sequel, aren't they? 
Police were dispatched at 9.40 a.m. for a report of a man shooting a gun inside his home. When officers arrived, they found Matthias uh, standing next to his the house, holding a shotgun, and ordered him to put the gun on the ground. Matthias told police that two small clowns were running around his apartment, and he had shot at them. The house was searched, and no one was found inside Matthias' apartment. Residents in the first floor apartment where Matthias fired the shotgun was not injured. Police noticed that Matthias' eyes were bloodshot, asked if he had been drinking. Matthias told investigators he had been drinking the previous night and had yet to go to bed. Police found a bottle of vodka in his pocket. While being questioned outside, Matthias pointed next door and said he still saw clowns on the neighbor's roof. And I love that this was in the report. <laughs> but officers did not see any. <laughs> I mean, that's important. Because what if there really were clowns? <laughs> you know, you could, I just imagine the two officers are like, oh, Jesus Christ. No, Dave. He, there's some been some weird shit. He might really be right. Yeah. We got to check it out. All right, fucking Mulder, sure. Let's go check for fucking... I mean, a couple of years ago, there were just people dressing up as clowns and hanging out in parks and shit to be that, creepy. That, that was a thing. That was a fucking thing going back on. When we had, back when we had not yet sunk into the pit of despair. But tiny clowns... Now everybody's fucking anxious all the time for that kind of crap, but... If you're drinking so much that you see tiny clowns... You should stop drinking. Really? You should have some water. That's lie down. That's that is not a good thing for alcohol to do. That that is alcohol's way of saying it's not for you. It's time to stop. Yeah, you, you should see other drugs. <laughs> okay. I don't know that I don't know that we want this guy on harder <laughs> drugs than alcohol. I'd I'd like to think if he, he was hallucinating clowns on vodka. I'd like, like not even fucking Jaeger or some crazy shit. Just plain old vodka. I'd like to think if he was stoned, he would probably sit down and have a conversation with the clowns instead. <laughs> Maybe. So what's it like being a clown, man? Yeah, Is he, that crazy. Just he'd be less inclined to shoot at them, and maybe they could come to some sort of understanding with the invisible clowns. <laughs> sure. Just I, I just can you imagine just that moment when he's telling the cops there's clowns on the neighbor's roof and they look over. No, no, there aren't. There are See, and one of, one of the many multitude of reasons I could not be a cop is I'd be the asshole that looks at my partner and is like, you don't see them? <laughs> Look, the, the big nose and the big red sh You don't really? <laughs> They're doing some very obscene things with balloon animals in your general direction. <laughs> The fucking shotgun, though, Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's a bit much. See, I'm I'm gonna be on a little bit of the soapbox here. This is why you should lock up your guns, because if you're drunk, you'll have a hard time unlocking your guns to shoot at the imaginary clowns. If you're the kind of person who hallucinates when you drink, lock up your guns, because you know maybe you don't get to have guns. I know, I know. But you're shooting at imaginary clowns. You are! You're shooting at a match. Come on! I don't think you're a responsible firearm owner, sir. You're shooting a fucking shot. And that's not just one little bullet. That takes out, like, big old chunks of shit. Yeah, shotguns are, like, short-range obliteration, right? Yes! Uh, why? Why? Okay, the first. Th okay, the first thing we learned this week is for some people alcohol is just not for you. Yeah, you you need to get get on drug Tinder or whatever it is and find a new match. 
<laughs> because maybe just different alcohol. <laughs> like I'm a pretty fun drunk on most things. On tequila, I'm a rowdy fucking asshole. Well, that's because your body is mad you were stupid enough to drink tequila. Like, on most things, I, I get a little streak of kleptomania if I get drunk enough, and I steal your shit. You know, whatever. On tequila, it's a whole other level. I'm, I'm a chore to be around. We learned if you go to the grocery store and rub fruit on your ass, you need a hobby. Yeah. Get needlepoint is pretty good. Learn an instrument. If you really want to rub fruit on your ass, like maybe plant an apple tree in your yard and rub your own fruit on your ass. I mean, shit, just buy the fruit, go home, set up a webcam, then rub it on your ass. You're there's making probably, money. Yeah, there's probably somebody interested in watching you do that. You're, ma interested. you're making money. Your ass yeah. is making is is making money. We've learned cats are the damnedest fucking things. <laughs> they really are. Cats are amazing. Full fucking. I don't understand people who don't like cats because they are amazing, deeply weird creatures. And sometimes they bring home cocaine. And they put up with us. And they're just delightful and strange. Um. We've learned that just because you drive a Prius does not mean you get privileges. No. It's, it's, you, you don't, you're, you're, okay, you drive a Prius, woohoo, pull the fuck over. Thank you, you drive a fucking Prius. Pull the fuck over. We've learned that if you want to try to secure your property, a fucking simple, an alarm will do. Yeah. You don't have to. Average. It's fine. That will. You don't have to fucking like psychologically scar the neighborhood. <laughs> you don't got to get into like emotionally scarring people. Well, These are fucking kids who are not going to be able to hear that for the rest of their lives without you getting fucking flashbacks. Like what was stage two of that deterrent? Were they going to have little projectors of creepy children coming <laughs> toward you? I think Dave really needs to be in some line of work other than security, is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, we've learned there are times it, stealing bread for your family is not morally objectionable. Stealing beer and dishwasher pods. Jean Valjean would have taken dishwater washer pods if they existed back then. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics to Late Miz would have been really fucked up. <laughs> I, I, just, I just imagine the fucking. Look down, look down, the cooler is empty. 